Right, hey, welcome back to the 40 channel. Today, we're going to try and put the heart back in the mighty big 2H. Now, as you know, this is not the original motor, it should have been a 2F, but it was ripped out <coughs> due to having some issues from the last owner, and he's done the modification to put the 2H motor in. I'm okay with that, I'm pretty happy with that, and uh, it's going to go back in. So, we've just done a big clean up on it uh, as much as we can, and why it's back in there then we'll look at uh, cleaning some other components up what's in there that just gets out of the way we can keep moving forward and try to make this whole thing come together i think so let's get it in need to give a shout out to 47 troopy life check their instagram page out i've got a bit to learn about this 40. two brand new engine mounts as you may have remembered from our previous episodes one engine mount was completely broken right through the rubber and the other engine mounts thread was totally stripped so it wasn't even being held on so basically the motor was just sort of sitting there and it was remarkable that it never fell out I suppose anyway let's mount these up just gonna clean up under that mount there Just make sure that there's no build up or crud, which there actually is a bit of crud there. I want to try to make the mount sit as smooth as we can on the bottom of the, uh, the engine block there. I know being the 2H it's going to be a bit different to your 2F. But your locating pin gets up through here. Now it's pretty much size for size. The last guy, what he did you see ground down the top of the pin to get it up which made it really sloppy and is possibly why there was damage to the uh the old engine mount so i think what we're going to try and do i'll just give it a quick spray with some wd-40 under there try and line it up see if we can tap it on So all I do is a bit of pipe, set it over the um, existing thread and bolt, so it doesn't damage that at all. As you can see it's tapped right up, it sits perfectly in that hole, so there's no more movement and no slope, so it won't, uh, it can't damage this thread. Spring washer and nut. Let's just try and give it a fairly decent tighten up without wanting to damage the thread or strip the thread or stretch it. make sure it was all lined up right and that all the, uh, the engine mounts and the gearbox mounts all sat nice and flat and even and I'm pretty happy with that position so we still have a little bit of room to move if we need to we can pull all the bolts up and do them all up and uh, now that it's in here it's going to make it a lot easier to actually do anything that I need to do with this motor now I can move it around a bit it's not sitting on a pallet it's not in the way I've created some more room for myself 
Happy days, that's pretty exciting. But just importantly, I can give Duncan back his engine mount, which he kindly uh, lent to me. So thanks Duncan, you're a legend. Really appreciate that. Duncan's more of a Nissan man. So I won't hold that against him. But our next plan is to do a very basic strip down of the motor, basically just to give it a really good clean and then we can give it a nice paint just to make it look pretty. So we'll strip off the exhaust manifold, the intake manifold, we'll take off the alternator and any other little bits and pieces that are in the way. And then we can clean it up. What do you reckon, Jack? Nice. All right, let's do that. The exhaust manifold's got uh, two broken bolts here. They're missing. Intake manifold just down here has got a uh, blown out gasket, which probably was never put in right in the first place. So it's worth taking these off and replacing them. It's, un it's loosening that as well. Yeah. We only want to loosen that, so we we'll, might put a spinner on that, tighten that back up. This, this here is supposed to keep them really tight, stop them from moving, so don't let that move. Eddie motor, you've got this arm here, so we want to remove this arm. So we're just going to pop this clip off, and then it'll come straight off. Just going to label every fuel line. In there, clamp down. Nice and hard. How you going, Ali? Good. Good? This one's hot. Now on the alternator here that we're going to uh, pull off, there's been a bit of a weird, ingenious thing from the last owner to try to jack this back instead of just using a pry bar. And what it actually is, if we can get it off. Okay, what we actually got here is an old uh, 13 mil weird looking spanner thing that they've bent up and installed on there. Sorry. What was it? No, I'll take the feed. Oh, that was heavy. Jack's just covering up all the fuel line inlet so it keeps it clean. Not working. trying to remove some of these um, stud bolts or the manifold bolts and they are not moving they're absolutely stubborn as I've tried my few little tricks where you put two nuts on there try locking it on undoing I tried vice grips trying to get it off and without getting some heat on there and trying to heat it all up and bring them all out I think I should be able to get the gaskets off without removing them so so I don't want to damage the studs <coughs> by just really trying to get them out just for the sake of trying to make it a little bit easier to remove the gasket. So I'm going to leave them there, try and work around them, get all the gasket off like that. If that doesn't work, then we will try to maybe put a bit of heat around the bolt and then take them off. But at the moment, we'll work around them. Right, so we just want to clean all these gaskets off, all the old gaskets off the intake here. We want to clean it up as best we can. So. stuff off first and we can come back to it after you've removed as much of the gasket as you can with a paint scraper I find this little scraper absolutely sensational it just takes one of your uh, disposable razor blades just clips into the top and you can just work around and it gets right in there and it works since it works beautifully Now we're just going to take our little uh, disposable blade, we're just going to scrape around the, all the little areas that uh, we've missed to make sure we get all this gasket off. It's pretty important we get the whole lot off. Just 
Just getting a bit of heat shrink. Just the right size for this. Just screw it down over the thread. All right, now we've got all the shrink wrap covering all our fuel line inlets and outlets. We're just going to uh, hit with a heat gun, shrink it over, and seal the top off. Don't use a naked flame. I shouldn't have to say that, but, you know, don't use that. So once you heat it up, grab the top, give it a bit of a twist, and that'll seal it off. Continue to do the rest. It is hot, so just do it quickly. This will protect the fuel lines, make sure that no dirt, grime, dust, water, anything gets into those lines. Just been scraping out all the all the grease and gunk and rubbish that's built up from all these damaged gaskets where it's leaked down all over the, the block. So I'm just giving it a big scratch. I've scratched all back with a paint paint scraper. Just hitting it with a wire brush now. I'll give it a bit of a spray of degreaser. Now I'm trying to work carefully because I do not want to get any too much crap into here and I don't want to damage any of these surfaces. I'm just working all around that and then I'll be able to sort of seal all of that up uh, a bit later on. So we'll just keep scrubbing away all this build up of rubbish that has come out over the, uh, over the years. Industrial cleaner, some degreaser. <laughs> it tastes terrible. Right, I've just grabbed one of the kids' toothbrushes now. It's all right, I'll put it back when I'm finished. They won't know any different. I'll just tell them it's that charcoal toothpaste. All right, now I'm getting really desperate. I'm just trying to get in here and just give this a really good clean. Right, I'm just going to duck down to talking, grab a few more cleaning products and a few more uh, scrubbing brushes and that. I've got to do it while I can because everything's going to go into shutdown and to lockdown and it's really important that we uh, support some local business right now, more than ever. So if you know some local businesses around uh, your area that are either doing home delivery, I really, really encourage you guys to support your local business. Righto, I've been on an absolute painting frenzy. Painted all the block of the motor. Most of it did by our hand with a little small paintbrush just to get around everything without getting paint in everything. Uh, painted all your fuel rails, heater pipes, brakes, uh, bits of the front of the motor, um, bracketry, extractors. I painted everything. I've just gone ballistic. So I've spent a lot of time cleaning and scrubbing it all, degreasing it, wax and grease remover cleaning it right down, priming and painting, and the end result has been awesome. Right, I will try and clean up the uh, tappet cover. we we'll use some hydrochloric acid and water. A one to four mix. I don't know if that's right or not, but we'll give it a go and see how it turns out. So my wife asked me last night why my cruise is taking so long and I didn't really have an answer. I just said some things take a long time. Is this overkill for a 2H diesel? Let me know.
I know some of you guys are thinking this is all a bit of overkill for a 2H diesel but it looks pretty for now anyway new gasket or new uh, new o-ring seal I guess you'd more more likely call it Tied out these little bits of paint where the masking tape masked it off. Right, uh, we're going to try to remove these damaged studs. What we've got here is um, a little easing out. So, all we need to do, hopefully, it's going to be easy, we'll see what happens. So get your pin punch, hammer. You're going to try to find the center as best you possibly can. I have been spraying these every time I walk out with a bit of WD-40, hoping that penetrating oil will get right in those threads. Fingers crossed. Pick the right size drill. You don't want to go too big. Right on your center punch mark. You little ripper. Look at that. Right, okay, so we got one damage stud out, two more to go. Hopefully they're as easy as that. All right, just put a little bit of pressure on it and unscrew it and let it bite into the stud. Coming out. Yep. Nice job. Yeah. Another one out, one to go. Try to keep it as straight as you can. That's it, got it. Right, eh? Good job, Jack. We rescued all three of them without doing any major damage. Yep. If this was the intake manifold side, it's really important that you tape up this hole. You don't want any swarf or any crap getting inside the intake. That'd be a bad thing. So, just a point to remember, I didn't point that out before. But if you're doing intake, tape it up. Exhaust, it's not as critical. Some of these studs are a little bit there you go on. So we just got a uh, M8 diner. Just going to screw that on the end. It's just catching there. Just going to clean up the thread. Jack's just making sure that uh, all the surfaces are nice and clean. There's no bits of dirt or swarf or anything that's left on them. So we have a perfectly clean surface on the block. Make sure that all these surfaces are clean and they're ready to go. So a new gasket set. Jack's going to throw on the gaskets. Just carefully work them on. Just going to throw some nuts on nice and loose just to hold it all into place. What we're doing is on the gasket was a tiny little ridge. We just want to just compress that on that steel gasket. So we're just working our way along. We're just nipping it all up as we go. Just backwards and forwards, up and down, all the way. Of course, Jack took the fuel rails off. Jack's going to be putting them back on. Hopefully, he remembers how they went. Bit of juggling, mate. Righto, that's it. 
we've got a stack of work and I think I've finished filming so we put this little episode together. Jack's been awesome, Ali's been a bit of help down here as well which has been really good to see the kids involved. But we've stripped everything off the motor, gave it a really big clean up, started putting everything back on again and um, yeah, been really happy. Happy with the way the tappet covers come up. Lots of polishing, so those polishing discs were from Tulking, they gave us them and let us try them out, it's come up awesome. All the fuel rails, unfortunately I had a bit of a mishap with one of the fuel rails. So I'm going to have to chase down a spare fuel rail now. That's my fault. Um, painted all the motor blue. What's the blue in my job, Jack? Oh, fox fit. <laughs> fox fit blue. Uh, before I started this, I used to make fitness equipment. I used to paint it that colour blue. So happy days. Righto, guys. Thanks for your support. Really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the like button. Leave a comment if you like down the bottom. Righto guys, now most importantly, I really ask you guys to make sure that you phone your friends, check in on those that you would normally see that you haven't seen for a while because we're all separated, we're all in lockdown, all around the world, and there's people there that um, don't have FJ40s to work on. So they would be going insane, they would be um, struggling, I can imagine. So check on your loved ones and look after each other and look after yourselves. Righto, thanks guys. Thanks for watching.